Welcome to Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Series. I am your host, Captain Matt, and today we are talking about what do you do after you buy your new boat? Your new to you boat doesn't matter. What are the steps that you take when you first get your boat? So now what? Well, the first thing I'm going to recommend you do is you take a safe boating course uh, in your state. I'm going to recommend you take it locally. If you haven't done this before you bought the boat, um, find a safe boating course that's in your area uh, to get some local knowledge, to make some local connections, to learn a little bit about the local waterway in addition to all of the boater safety stuff that you need. Um, the America's uh, Boating Course, I've got that book. I've got the Seamanship book. Um, you'll get a, a nice manual that's a, a good reference for a lot of great information and then you'll it'll be fun you'll learn a lot of information and um and you'll have a good time get you kind of indoctrinated into the uh into the boating world so next thing that you need to do well you need to put your registration stickers on some recommendations uh and some guidelines to go by the first thing is they've got to be at least three inches high and they prefer block lettering. So it's easy to read. Make sure it contrasts with the hole. So if you've got a black hole, use white or silver or gray. If you've got a, a white hole, use black or navy or red. Something that's really going to stand out against the, the color. Um, you put it on both sides. You go from left to right. And then that registration sticker that you have, it goes at the end. So whatever the last letter of the um, of the serial or the number is, your registration numbers, it goes at the end of that. Um, and my recommendation to you is to go somewhere where they'll print it off in a sheet. And then you can use some masking tape to get it nice and level. Once you get it nice and level, go ahead and, and peel it back. So you put three three pieces of masking tape on, essentially. You put it on the top, on the outside edges, and then down the middle, you put it just straight down, top and bottom, okay? Now, once you get it lined up, now you go ahead and you take off the right side and you peel it back about a third of the way, maybe maybe halfway, and you cut it off and you start laying it out. You get your little scraper to, to get it uh, nice and nice and attached. And then you untape the other side and you've already got a nice straight line going. You put it all the way down. You use your little presser thing to scrape it all the way down. Make sure it's on nice and tight. And then once it's got a good solid stick, then you slowly peel off that um, the paper backing and it'll be nice and straight. It'll look great versus trying to go with individual letters, getting them straight. Just do that whole sheet and uh, your numbers will look nice for as long as you own the boat. The next thing you're going to want to do is you want to learn your local boating laws and you want to watch this video, the rules in boating. If for some reason there's not a safe boating course or you, you just can't get to it, at a minimum, you've got to watch this video I did, Boating Rules in 11 Minutes. It's the bare minimum that everybody needs to know. And then also just boat, um, just search on Google, boating rules in your state so you know uh, what are their age requirements? What are the requirements doing water sports, the fishing requirements? What are the, the launching requirements in your local, local area on the waterways that you'll be boating um, so that you're not making a silly mistake that could have easily been found? And what you're usually looking for is in South Carolina, it's the DNR. It could be the wildlife, uh, whatever that organization that's in charge of the waterways that you're boating, find those rules so you're not making a mistake that's easily avoidable. Next, you got to outfit your boat with the proper gear. So there's two things. There's the legal requirement for boats over 16 feet, a Coast Guard throw cushion, U.S. Coast Guard approved life jackets if you're in the U.S. for everybody um, 12 and under have to be wearing it when the boat's underway a marine grade fire extinguisher that is uh, designated for electrical fires, a sound making device. I'm going to recommend you get one in addition to your horn because your horn's going to go out at some point. Uh, if you're on the, on the open ocean, uh, you'll need a flare gun or large bodies of water. Have that flare gun. 
your safety switch, your safety cutoff switch. You need to wear that if you're on federally navigatable waterways. Uh, and then your anchor and navigation light if you're going to be out in the evening. I've done a whole video on must-have gear from the legal requirements. That's where this slide is from, as well as other gear that I think is great to have. Uh, a proper anchor set up, dock lines, at least four, maybe six dock lines, depending on the size of your boat. Fenders, at least two, maybe four, depending on the type of boating. A first aid kit, a Leatherman and a knife, and a VHF radio. And then there's some other fun stuff that I share that maybe you, you weren't aware was a something that you have to have. So check out that video as well. The next is read through the the required maintenance in your owner's manual. If you didn't get an owner's manual, I'm just talking for the engine. The boat owner's manual, not a whole lot of great information in there. Um, it's okay if you want to skim through it if you're if you're that type of person, but everybody should get the owner's manual for their engine for 30, 40, 50 bucks. You can get them online if you don't have it. If it came in your pack when you bought the boat uh, from a, a dealer or a private seller, flip through to the maintenance section. See what their required maintenance is. See what the oil they recommend. See what gas they recommend so that you're not making a mistake that's going to be costly. Um, I, I've got a video that I'm, I'm just put together. It's releasing soon uh, about mistakes, expensive mistakes that uh, new boaters make uh, on maintenance. So check that out, but start with your owner's manual. There's a lot of great information there that's accurate to your engine versus going to Facebook or, God forbid, some youtube channel that talks about boating um go to your manual get it from the source uh because not everybody has the same requirements uh on the manufacturer side and not all boating experts are true boating experts and you may get some bad information so go to the manual spend the money and get it if you don't have it the next thing is i'm going to recommend to you that you inspect everything that could sink your boat that first time you put it in the water Know where the drain plug is and how to put it in. Inspect all your through-haul fittings and your transducers. Anywhere there's a hole cut through the hole of your boat that something goes from the inside of the boat to the outside. Your depth finder transducer is probably on the back of your boat uh, on the very bottom, maybe in the middle. The through-haul fittings, your bilge, um, your bilge outlet, uh, if you've got any scuppers, if you've got any drains for uh, a cooler or a live well or something, inspect all those make sure that the through haul fittings are in good shape and don't need to replace make sure that everything is caulked properly so that water's not getting in check your wall water your raw water and cooling pumps and hoses uh, make sure that there's no leaks there's no hose clamps that are missing that a hose could pop off and, and next thing you know you're taking on water test your bilge pumps um, there's there might be multiple pumps on your boat depending on what you have and then when you do get to the water the first time Start the boat with the engine hatch open and watch. Make sure that there's something that you're not aware of because it's a brand new boat or it's a new to you boat. Um, it's a habit I got into when I was selling boats is I didn't start a boat I didn't know uh, with that engine compartment uh, closed. I just opened it up. So if for some reason it was it was bringing on water, I knew it before I started idling away. So um, next thing you need to do, make sure you've got insurance. You need to have insurance on your boat for the boat coverage itself, liability insurance. If you, if you do have an accident and you cause some damage to somebody else's vessel or an individual, but I'm also going to recommend in some areas, check out to see if there's a good CETO or boat us franchise. They're basically AAA on the water, um, for a hundred, 120 bucks, 150 bucks a year. If you do need a tow, you run out of gas, you have a bed, dead battery. Um, the keys fall in the water and the float falls off or, or it breaks down. Um, you can call them. They'll give you a tow in, um, a tow is going to be 300 on the cheap side to a, maybe a thousand dollars, depending on how far you got to go, where you're at. And, um, for, for a hundred, 150 bucks a year, it's great insurance. Uh, there's some other value as well with CETO. You can call and get some local water conditions. 
Uh, they do a great job. They were part of the U.S. Boat Expo, and uh, the president was on that uh, with the president of their foundation. A great organization, uh, but check in your local area, see which one people recommend. Uh, but uh, CETO is, um, is one that I've always had good relationships with um, from the ones, the franchises that I've, I've met. The next thing is scope out where what it's going to be like on your first outing. Uh, if you're going to a boat ramp, hey, go to Google Earth, find the boat ramp, see what it looks like, how you're going to get there, and then zoom in on that ramp and see, okay, if I've got to pull in, what does my backing situation look like? What's the parking look like? What's the water right around it look like? And have a good idea of what you're getting into that first day. Is there some challenging things you need to be aware of? Is maybe there a different boat ramp? If it's a marina that you're going to, What's it look like getting in and out of the marina if you haven't seen it before? What the, what's the water look like in that area, the depths, um, any rocky areas that you need to be aware of? And um, you can really zoom in on Google, uh, on Google Earth and really get a sense of the water depths, the dangers, uh, in addition to just taking your time uh, when you do get out of the water. So I really like to do that when I'm heading, really heading into any new boat ramp, but especially on your first outing when everything's brand new to you. Next thing you need to know is get familiarized with your helm, how to start your boat safely. If you have a stern drive or an inboard, you have to run that bilge blower for three to five minutes every time before you start it, every single time, without fail, without exception. Know what switches do what, how to work your depth finder, how to work your stereo. If you've got joystick controls or, or cruise control or uh, autopilot, learn how to run those while you're on land or, or just before you head out of the water. If you've got a chart plotter, electronics, learn how to use those while you're sitting still not while you're going down a busy waterway or a busy river or a busy channel and you're trying to kind of zoom in and you're figuring things out. Figure that stuff out beforehand. There's very few things on the boat that you can't run except for your depth finder and your radar that you can't run before you're on the water and the the pumps. But get to know your boat before you're out there trying to figure out, why won't my boat start? Well, I don't know how to put the safety switch on, that kill switch, which is right here, which your boat won't start. Um, Figure out all those things before that first outing. And I'm also going to recommend that if you're new to boating, is hire a local captain. Find a local captain, invest three, 600 bucks maybe to spend two, three, four, five hours with them on your boat, on your waterway. It's something I've done with with clients when I sold boats. Um, I've done it for uh, other people as well that have, have paid me to do it, usually 500 bucks or so. Depending on your area, it can be more expensive. But get somebody that knows the water. Get somebody that understands what they're doing and let them show it to you on your boat. Get that training. It's going to be money well invested. You're going to be safer. You're going to have a better time, faster, less stress, less aggravation, less frustration. And let's be honest, you're probably not going to ding up your boat uh, because instead of spending a thousand dollars to fix your gel coat or pull out a dent on your pontoons, you're not going to. You can spend that money on learning how to do it right without all the aggravation and avoid that, uh, avoid that issue. If you can't find a local captain, um, my best boat captain on the water training is the next best thing to getting trained on your boat by a real live person. That's an expert teacher that knows what they're doing. I've trained over, over 200 boaters, um, including my in-laws, including friends, uh, friends, kids, um, people that have never been around boats before, uh, younger kids, single women, um, old, young. I've trained everybody, and I've got a, a system that's rock solid. You can check it out at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash captain. There's a pontoon version. There's a single version. We're working on a twin engine version and a coastal version, but check that out. For a, a fraction of what you would pay to hire somebody, you can do it. Uh, if you can't find that local person, um, do check that out. And also, you don't want to go out on a busy weekend, especially Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day. Just don't make that your first time out on your new boat if you're a new boater. Um, Just don't do it. If you can, go out during the week. Go out on a Tuesday afternoon or a Friday morning um, before you're going to hit the lake for the big weekend. 
go out with yourself and your spouse or your whoever's going to be boating with you. Um, go out with them, and what's going to happen is you're not going to be rushed. You're not going to have that additional pressure of having all these people, all this busyness where you can't focus on your boat and learning it, you're focusing on not running into people. And that's when an expensive mistake is going to be made. You're going to, it's going to be a terrible experience 99 times out of a hundred. Um, so if you can go out during the week, this is actually Lake of the Ozarks. I, I might be in this picture somewhere. Uh, and, uh, it, it can get that busy. This was a, a boat races, a shootout, the uh, Lake of the Ozark shootout, an awesome time, but Go out on a quiet day when you don't have to mess with all the craziness and you can focus on learning what to do, understanding how your boat operates, doing the best boat captain on the water training. Um, if you're going to figure it out yourself, do it on a quiet day. Don't do it on a Saturday at two o'clock when everybody else is out there um, or a major holiday weekend. Do it when it's quiet. Do it when it's calm. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, make a comment. Let me know what you thought of it. If you got questions, um, the best boat captain of the water training is, uh, is a great program. If you're new to boating, uh, check that out. Even people that have been boaters for, for a year or two have found it incredibly valuable. There's a money back guarantee. So check that out, subscribe. And remember life truly is better on a boat.